right. Woo! Okay. All right, folks, this is so great. My name is Dan Garcia. I'm a teaching faculty here. We've been running Computer Science Education Day for a couple of years now, and it's so great every year to see the new awesome faces of folks who are being exposed to computer science. Do you guys know what week this is? Okay, finals week. This is Computer Science Education Week, not just in California, not just in the Bay Area, not just the United States, in the entire world. This is, a, this is a worldwide effort called Computer Science Education Week to celebrate and embrace the awesome things that computer science education can bring you and the inspiring opportunities that you can kind of see by virtue of our code and activities like this. This is many, many, many universities across the country are offering outreach activities where we're kind of bringing university awesome things to local high school students. And this is, I think, arguably one of the largest in the country. So I'm really excited about that. Okay, so, woo! I heard, a, I heard a music. All right, so, there's, a, there's music or something? Okay, so what I always like to do, <laughs> got an ad. What I always like to do is I always love to find out where you guys have come from. And so you can hear how, where, you, where each other's come from, too. So let's have the teachers raise their hand. Have the teachers raise their hand, and I'll point to you, and you tell us how far you came from. All right, go ahead. Hercules. Hercules in the house. Where's the Hercules people in the house? Hercules in the house. All right, Hercules. Go, go. Uh, Lincoln High School from San Jose. Lincoln High School, San Jose. San Jose. Awesome, awesome. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Te teachers, teachers only. Go ahead. Loud. Teachers only, teachers only. Teachers, yeah. Shh. San Jose, no, San Jose, awesome. Go. Gunderson High School of San Jose. Gunderson High School, wow, a lot of San Jose folks. Congratulations, awesome. Other folks, yeah, go. Emory High School, all right. Go, 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 more, more, more loud, loud. San Lorenzo, San Lorenzo, who else are we missing? Go. California High School. Anybody else? Yeah, go, 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 go. San, another San Jose in the house, awesome, over there, yeah, loud. Galileo in the house, all right. In the back, center, yes, go. Oakdale, Oakdale, all right. Anybody didn't call on? Any other places we didn't talk about? And I think folks are coming from Oakland Tech and some other folks, awesome, awesome, awesome. You almost ready? Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, where is he? Oh, they, um, they left it in the cafe. Yeah. All right. Just, so just let me just give you a, yeah. shh. Let me just give you an overview of how this day is going to go. The day is going to begin with these awesome, inspiring welcome addresses we're going to have for you. We're going to go take a picture, the largest picture. As I said, this is one of the largest gatherings of, of all of many high school students in one place at a university. So we're going to all take an amazing picture in front of the Campanile. Uh, and then what's going to happen is we're going to go and be broken up into two groups. The first group is going to go to an auditorium and hear awesome, inspiring talks, demos, kind of sit passively as you watch these really cool things as you're kind of blown away by these amazing, amazing uh, demos by uh, some of our new students in a course called Beauty and Joy of Computing. These students have never programmed before, and this is their the best of the best of the best projects were chosen to demonstrate to you. So that's really cool. We'll have a UC Bug group who's going to talk about how to make a Pixar. Sh you guys seen Coco? Who's seen Coco yet? Awesome, right? Pixar's right down the road. So they're going to show you how to make a Pixar short film in only 30 minutes and show some of the best films they've ever made, the short little mini films they've made. And we're going to have some inspiring guest speakers by uh, one of my colleagues, Alyosha Efro. So it's going to be a really, really great morning. So if you have the talks in the morning, then the afternoon is workshops. So you're going to have these really great hands-on workshops. One is uh, Computer Science Unplugged, where we teach computer science without a computer. Then the next is a, a, a group uh, you're going to learn with, you're going to have kind of an hour of code activities for another about 50 minutes each. And then you'll, you'll like a rotating set in the afternoon. And then you'll go visit me, and I'm going to teach you about game theory. So that's going to be really fun. 
So some of you get that rotating hands-on thing first. Some of you get the instructional stuff first. But it should be a lot of fun. And sandwich in the middle, obviously, is lunch. So we'll have some fun. So how many of you are programming in a text-based language? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Text-based language. OK. Let's hear which languages you guys are programming in. Okay, somebody, let's hear. Let me, let me hear. I'm hearing Java, Python, CSS. What other, other languages we haven't said so far? HTML, good. C Sharp, Ruby, and English. OK, good. Wait. That's not a language. That's not a language. OK. Yeah, another one? Another? OK, uh, so how many of you are programming in a blocks-based programming language where you're dragging blocks around? Let's hear where you guys I hear Where? Can't hear it. Carol the robot? What else? What else? Over there? Snap. Snap. All right. Here's a question for you. Which is more powerful? text-based languages or block-based languages? Raise your hand if you believe that text-based languages are more powerful. Ooh. Raise your hand if you believe block-based languages are more powerful. Whoa. Raise your, ooh. Raise your hand if you believe they're equally powerful. You are all right. <laughs> equally powerful, all huh? right? Good, good stuff. All right, so you learned something today. You learned something today. All right. Have any of you learned recursion yet? Not really. OK, all right. So there are opportunities. I believe there's an opportunity in the Hour of Code. If you decide to jump on recursion, there's an opportunity to jump on some of that. It should be a lot of fun. How, who came the farthest? Who came, who really, the group, they get up at 4 AM to get here. This is like a lot of effort to do this. Who, who came the farthest? Yeah, go ahead. Over there, guy, where'd you guys? Oakdale, OK. How far? How, how, how far was that a trip? Three hours? Well done. Well done. That's a great investment. So this is also, by the way, yesterday was also, this is a special, special thing. Yesterday was also the launch of an initiative in California called CS for California. And we're really excited to try to bring computer science to every single high school in California. You guys are really lucky. Like you say, you know, we're just taking our class. We don't think we're so special. You are really special. There are many, many kids in California who would love to get computer science, but their high school doesn't offer anything, anything. So you guys are really lucky. You have great teachers. They're bringing you here. You're really, really fortunate. The initiative of CS for California is to try to bring computer science to every single high school student. So there's an opportunity. So even if you, if you didn't want to do it, there's an opportunity for you if you decide, you know what, let me try that. If, you, if there's nothing there for you to take, there's only online courses. And maybe you don't even have a computer. Maybe you don't have internet access at home. There's, this is cut off to you. So we need to bring computer science to every single student in California. And the CS for California effort is trying to do that. We're going to start by trying to get a computer science class in every single high school. So that means a computer science teacher in every single high school. So your teachers probably went to some summer professional development. They learned computer science. They've probably done it for, from other years as well. We need to have those teachers contribute to the pool of teachers that are offering professional development so that more teachers can get on the bandwagon and do this. It's really, really exciting. So anyway, CS for California, do a hashtag on Twitter. It's really, really exciting. It launched yesterday. Yesterday, I was at the event, the launch event. I met uh, Lieutenant Gavin Newsom, Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, who was there. Uh, Cheryl Sandberg from Facebook, and they were all kind of celebrating this launch, and it was really, really great. So it, this, is not this is not just like a local Berkeley thing for a day. This is a much, you're, you're part of a much larger cog of folks getting experience, getting this exposure to computer science, which has so much potential to change lives. We are really, really excited to bring this to you. And you'll see some of the talks about that. So before I take up all of my time, we officially start at 9.30, but I'm going to show you a six-minute video from Code.org. Code.org is this inspiring national uh, group that is trying to bring computer science to the world. Uh, and so I'm going to show you this video, and then I'll introduce our, our, our first speaker. OK, so let's jump right in. And action. I hit play. Got. And the thing. 
I need some help. I need some help. I did this. I got there. Oh, 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 video, 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 video. I see a video link. I'm clicking the video link. Where was the? The link was like the. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, I see it. it, it okay. Is it just a picture? No, it played for us. Then let's just Nothing, right? You want to just go to, you want to go to, it on YouTube? Yeah, can you go to YouTube? Can you do that? Yeah. Chrome. What schools don't teach? That's what it's called. Love it. Okay. Go. I was 13 when I first got access to a, a computer. My parents bought me a, a Macintosh in 1984 when I was in the sixth grade. Um, intro to computer science. I wrote a program to play tic-tac-toe. I think it was pretty humble beginnings. I think the first program I wrote asked uh, things like, what's your favorite color? Or how old are you? I first learned how to make a green circle and a red square appear on the screen. The first time I actually had something come up and say, hello world. I, did, I made a computer do that. It was just astonishing. Learning on program didn't start off as wanting to learn all of computer science or, um, or trying to master this discipline or anything like that. It just started off because I wanted to do this one simple thing. I wanted to make something that was fun for myself and, and my sisters. And I wrote this little program and basically just add a little bit to it. And then when I needed to learn something new, I looked it up, either in a book or on the internet, and then added a little bit to it. It's really not unlike kind of playing an instrument or something, or, 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 you know, or playing a sport. It starts out being very intimidating, but you kind of get the hang of it over time. Coding is something that can be learned. And um, I know it can be intimidating. A lot of things are intimidating, but uh, you know, what is it? A lot of the coding people do is actually fairly simple. Um, it's it's more about the process of breaking down problems than uh, you know sort of coming up with complicated algorithms as people traditionally think about it. You don't have to be a genius to know how to code. You need to be determined. Addition, subtraction, uh, that, that's about it. You should probably know your multiplication tables. <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to code. Do you have to be a genius to read? Even if you want to become a race car driver or play baseball. Um, or, uh, you know, build a house. And it, all of these things have been turned upside down by software. What it is is, you know, computers are, are everywhere. You want to work in agriculture? <laughs> Do you want to work in entertainment? Do you want to work in manufacturing? You know, it's, it's just all over. <laughs> and none of us know how to read and write code. When I was in school, I was in this after school group called the WizKids, and when people found out, they laughed at me, and you know, all these things, and I'm like, man, I don't care. I think it's cool, and you know, I'm learning a lot, and some of my friends have jobs. Our policy is literally to hire as many talented engineers as we can find. The whole limit in the system is just that there just aren't enough people who are trained and have these skills today. To get the very best people, we try to make the office as awesome as possible. There's all these kind of interesting things uh, around the office, places where people can play or relax um, or go to think or play music or be creative. Whether you're trying to make a lot of money or whether you just want to change the world, computer programming is an incredibly empowering skill to learn. I think if someone had told me that 
software is really about humanity, that it's really about helping people by using computer technology, it would have changed my outlook a lot earlier. To be able to actually come up with an idea and then see it in your hands and then be able to press a button and have it be in millions of people's hands, uh, I mean, I think we're the first generation in the world that's really ever had that kind of experience. Just to think that you can start something in your college dorm room and you can have a set of people who haven't built a big company before come together and build something that a billion people use as part of their, their daily lives is, is just crazy to think about, right? It's really, it's humbling and it's amazing. The programmers of tomorrow are the wizards of the future. You know, you're going to look like you have magic powers compared to everybody else. I think it's amazing. It's, I think it's the closest thing we have to a superpower. Great quarters are today's rock stars. That's it. Okay, so now I'm back online. Very good. Um, and we're working very hard to create new classes and even new majors to accommodate all the need so you can go out and not just be successful, but make the word, world a better place. In fact, we have a software engineering class whose specific goal is to make the world a better place. It does that with class projects where groups of students team up with NGOs, non-governmental organizations, and various local businesses to build software tools to help you do things like monitoring how much energy you're using, or using smartphones to track and map rescue team locations, or connecting mothers and newborns in developing nations with local aid communities. This class is taught actually around the world online as a MOOC, a massive online course, and so, and of which Berkeley offers quite a few, and so you can go check it out or even take it if you like. So a lot of this demand for computer science education is coming from students and their teachers from outside uh, Computer, the computer science department. So for example, from cognitive science, for where people want to study how the brain works, and from brain scans, from MRI scans. And from biology, for example, analyzing the genome to understand disease in the environment. And demography, to understand social networks, which can describe how diseases spread or how politics works. And of course, there's a whole industrial revolution going on around something called big data and in industry. And you can tell how big it is because there's even a rock group called Big Data now. And so we've started a new uh, class, a new freshman class with no prerequisites. It's called Data Science 8, where each week the instructors pick a different data set from some, other, from some area. It could be census data or the text from a novel like Huckleberry Finn and perhaps polls from the last election in a future class. Then they ask interesting questions about the data set, like how are income distributions changing? or you know, which characters are likely to get married depending on how often their names were mentioned in the text, or how could the pollsters have gotten the last election so wrong. And then each week they teach just enough Python and statistics in order to answer those questions. This class has been taught for over six semesters now. A year ago it had 500 students in it. This semester it has 1,000. We're expecting in the order of 1,500 next semester, and we're in the process of creating a whole new major where this will be the first course, because and there's just enormous demand around the campus for this. 
So Berkeley also has a lot of ongoing research in data science as well, producing some of the programming tools that are very widely used in industry. But let me tell you one story about using data science to save a life. A few years ago, a teenager with a severe immunodeficiency disorder, that means that he was very susceptible to infections, was hospitalized for five weeks in Wisconsin. He kept getting worse and worse, and he was finally in a coma. And the doctors weren't able to figure out what to do about it. Finally, as a last resort, they sent a sample of his spinal fluid to some doctors at UC San Francisco, which is the medical school, to try to use some DNA sequencing technology to figure out what the germ was. And they, what they did was they used some software from Berkeley, a new DNA assembly algorithm, and they were just very quickly able to filter out all of the boys' DNA and just leave the germs' DNA behind. And they were to figure out exactly which antibiotics to use, and they saved the boy's life. And he was able to go home four weeks later. And amusingly, the name of that uh, software tool was SNAP, but it's not the same SNAP you're going to use later. It stood for Scalable Nucleotide Alignment Program. So that's not what you'll be doing later today. So of course, computer science is about helping people have a lot of fun too, not just saving their lives. And there are plenty of opportunities for that. So if you've ever seen a Disney movie uh, like Brave with Princess Merida, and she has this big head of curly red hair, and the reason it moves around so realistically when she runs or moves her head is that one of our students spent a summer internship at Pixar writing the software that moves her hair around in a realistic way. It turns out to be a kind of a physics simulation. And they've been using his software ever since in all their movies. But since he was only there for three months, alas, he doesn't get screen credit. But he's still very satisfied with that experience. But you can still think go bears whenever you see flopping hair in a Disney movie. So interestingly, the student is now using some of those same ideas to make MRI machines run faster in hospitals. Because when they take pictures of little children who like to wiggle around, they can't take scans for very long, and so it, they have to run a lot faster. And I should, would be remiss to mention that, you know, not mention that one of our faculty has actually won an Oscar, an Academy Award for his work in this area, James O'Brien. And, and it was for, the official uh, award was for believable on-screen destruction. So whenever things get smashed and glass flies all around, it's all his software that you're looking at. So there's so many other fun stories I could tell about computer science here at Berkeley, but let me turn the floor over to Emoju. Thank you very much and have a great day. All right, is this working? Is this better? All right, I'll use the left turn. Oh, okay. I need both. Welcome to Berkeley. How many of you, is this your first time at Berkeley? Oh, welcome. Um, we hope we'll see you here in a couple of years in this same classroom as a student. My name is Omoju Miller, and a couple of years ago, I was a graduate student here at Berkeley. I am a senior data scientist at GitHub in San Francisco, and I work on big data and machine learning. Um, how many of you guys know about GitHub? Oh, actually a few people, great, I'm excited about that. Um, so when he spoke about big data and machine learning, a lot of the tools that I actually use at work were developed right here at Berkeley. Uh, among them, chief among them, Apache Spark. The great thing about coming to Berkeley and doing computer science, see, I was one of those students who refused at some point to learn my multiplication tables. Remember the guy was like, oh, you should know your multiplication. I decided I'm not going to do that because they were making me memorize my multiplication tables. And I thought that made no sense, that I thought I was stupid because I felt like 5 times 12, 5 times 13, 6 times 1, 6 times 2. I felt like there must be some underlying pattern generating all these numbers. So why not just teach us the algorithm that generates all these numbers versus reasoning, memorizing all those numbers? So I started doing things around learning what are the formulas for generating things. Back then, I did not know that what I was doing was algorithms or the beginnings of computer science. And I continued doing that kind of work till I became a computer science major, graduated with a computer science major, and did my PhD right here at Berkeley, studying how human and machines reason together. And now I use all of that stuff at GitHub to make sure that our data products are way more better. We are very, very excited to bring you guys to campus today. We've been doing this for quite a while now, and every single year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Let me see. Uh, who has come the farthest? 
Is there any high school? Wait, okay, what school are you from? How far? You raised your hand. How far? San Jose. Is there a place that beats San Jose? LA. Is there somebody from LA? Uh, Santa Cruz? Where? Milpitas? Oakdale. Where is Oakdale? Oh, okay, that's very far. Just not of Mavesto. So we try our best to get as wide as possible in the Bay Area so we can have a cross sample of you guys come to campus and learn about the kinds of stuff we do. One, like, um, like we said earlier, one of the most exciting things that's happening on Berkeley's campus is our new data science major that we're going to be creating. The reason why this is very, very important is that data is everywhere. How many of you guys have like a smart device on you right now? All of that is data. Every single one of your devices is recording your movements and is giving that data back to the company. And somebody has to work on that data to gain insights from that data. So our class, our class, the D8 class, is actually beginning to do work around that. And in a couple of years, if some of you guys are seniors and you choose to come to Berkeley next year, you might actually end up taking that class. And the most interesting thing about that class is the kinds of work you do in that class from the very beginnings of your career here at Berkeley has massive impact around the world. Many of you guys know that we've been suffering a lot of effects of climate change, and as, as a result, a lot of people are being displaced. One of the ways that people are using data, people are aggregating data on platforms like GitHub to actually do things like crisis response. Because these things are happening more and more and more, and we need to figure out where are people, so if you can get access to census data, you can have an idea of how many people are actually in Puerto Rico. If you can get a different kind of data, you can figure out the topography of Puerto Rico and figure out the people who are in the hills, the people who are in the flats, and how long it will actually take you to get from the flats to the hills, figuring out how much food to disperse, what's the most effective algorithm, most effective way to get food across, and what are the fastest ways for people to actually build their own networks when the Wi-Fi's are down so that they can give information back to the world. That kind of stuff you can actually start doing within your first year at Berkeley. You can be actionable enough. And I want to share a story that did not happen at Berkeley, but a story around data and data and young people who are being um, energized to use data to solve real life problems. How many of you remember like a year or two ago, um, the African continent, West Africa specifically, had the Ebola crisis. <laughs> All right, so um, some of the people, so I am originally from Nigeria, and Nigeria has around 180 million to 200 million people. So the fact that Ebola was in Nigeria was going to be a massive humanitarian disaster. Imagine 200 million people having Ebola. That pretty much would take down the world. And so they wanted to figure out what was the most effective mechanism to stop Ebola in its tracks. And that problem ended up being solved to a big, big degree by computer scientists. Not necessarily building algorithms, but using computer graphics and building simple apps to teach people how to protect themselves against this disease. So people, anybody like to draw? Sometimes the most effective mechanism of passing information around is actually showing people images. So people who are working on computers built the simulations, built these images, and launched an app. And the most interesting thing was we needed to gather data to figure out what was happening in other parts of West Africa. And because you can work with computers from a remote location without having to actually touch people, people who were quarantined do you know what I mean by quarantine, where they're not allowed to reach other people? People who were quarantined had access to computers, and because of that, they were still able to actually take part in that rescue response. So I'm hoping that you are getting an opportunity to see that computer science is a very, very powerful tool, from doing things like building Meredith's hair in Brave, to saving lives in different parts of the world, to actually doing crisis response, and to doing everything from your sequencing, your DNA, to figuring out how much energy your cell phone has, all of that is powered by computer science and big data. 
I hope that you guys, when you go out, out here, either to Sibley Auditorium or to Soda Hall and start participating in your Hour of Code, you will start to think about how you can use these things in the long term. So on three, I want you guys to say, Go Bears. One, two, three. Go Bears!